Good morning folks, Thursday morning here. I'm going to be making a question of the week. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not question of the week, but I'm going to make a video response to the question of the week number 50. So as usual, I'm going to read this uh, question and then I'm going to uh, give my very own response. So here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, Moses, I wonder if you have any advice to those of us who have already learned English uh, but want to master it, particularly accent reduction and vocabulary extension. Do you as a native speaker have any tips? And uh, this question is posed by our friend Irena from Ukraine. So, first thing I should say, should stress, is that um, when it comes to learning a foreign language, the accent is really, it, it really isn't um, something that you should stress about. Um, I still stick to my philosophy, although I made a bit of changes. I'm doing some different things, just testing out some things here. I have, I have been doing lately um, I still stick to this uh, fundamental philosophy that when it comes to learning a language this, the accent is something that is not important to pick up um, sure it's it's a, it's a matter of preference um, it's pleasurable to some people some people that's what they get they get a kick out of accents when they learn languages there's nothing wrong with that but it's not a necessity it's not something that you should stress about um, I think when it when you learn a language, the the main thing is really um, making sure your pronunciation is good. Make sure your pronunciation is very very good, so that you when you enunciate certain words, you speak with the native speaker, the native English speaker, or someone else who speaks the English well, they will be able to understand you well. Um, in my experience, I met a lot of foreigners, um, a lot of foreigners. Who um, and I'm a very patient person. I'm very very patient. Um, I met foreigners who who've been studying English for years. Um, they've actually majored in English, and when they tried to speak to me, I had a hard time understanding them because it was mainly the pronunciation. They had strong accents, but it was mainly the pronunciation that really made it difficult to try to understand what they were trying to uh, say to me. So that you really really want to make sure that your pronunciation is good. That's more important than an accent, okay? Um, accents, it's like, um, it, it's a matter of preference, and it's, it's almost like, uh, how can I compare this? Accents are like, uh, it's like materialism, if you will. Um, if I have a car, okay, I have a car, a nice running car, it runs really, really well, it, it gets me from point A to point B, gets me to work, um, get to work, make money, pay my bills. Um, it gets me to the grocery store, buy food to survive. Um, if my, if my car is running really good, there's really no point. It's, it's not a necessity for me to buy another car unless, unless I want to do so, unless I have the extra money and I just want to do it for pleasure. Um, it's just something that I want to do that makes me happy, but it's not a necessity. That's how accents are to me. You don't really need to pick up these accents okay um, it's a pleasurable thing now I don't want to say when you sound like a native um, of that particular region or the language that you're studying I don't want to say that um, they're going to have more openness to you or they're going to be um, more accepting because you sound like them however they will be uh, they'll, they'll probably find it more pleasurable that you sound like them like they 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 always find that pleasurable. Many of them find it pleasurable, pleasurable because they feel that a lot of them feel that you can't really get rid of your your native accent, your own native accent, your native English speaker. You can't get rid of the English accent. A lot of them feel that way. So when they see an English a native English speaker speaking in their foreign language, and they sound like them. They tend to get surprised. If you have two people, okay, one person here who speaks the language like a native. And then you have this other person here who speaks it. I mean, they 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 sound foreign. Like they don't they haven't picked up that particular accent. Um, they're still going to be equally accepted um, and appreciated because they both they both can communicate in that language. So um, it, it's not really something that you should really worry about. Okay. Uh, so those those of you who want to learn accent, you want to pick up this accent. Of the particular region then um, it's going to take a lot of time it's going to take a lot of effort a lot of work and a lot of patience 
um, you're basically going to have to live this language. Okay, you can't listen to something and just um, you can't listen to something for one day or two days and then just pick up the accent and when you start speaking you will have the accent. It doesn't work like that. You literally have to live this language. Okay, and when you when you live this language, you have to do a lot of listening. You get up, listen to the audio. You listen to um, you know listen to podcasts anything with authentic audio that you can listen to on a daily basis you can hear this language okay by true native speakers then this is this is this is the this is living a language mimicking too like trying to sound like these natives you 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 um, you enunciate certain words you try to sound like that that you try to produce the accent that they're producing uh, all of this stuff plays a big role in living the language, okay? And it takes time. It's going to take a lot of time to do this and a lot of patience. Uh, some people, for some people, it's not really um, an easy thing to do because it's not it's not easy for people to come out of their comfort zone. When you come out of your comfort zone, you, like, okay, some people, they feel that they sound like an idiot. They sound weird. They don't sound right when they try to produce certain sounds, and it's understandable because the language is foreign. So they don't want to take that extra step. They say, you know what? Ah, that's that sounds too weird. You know, like it's almost like the tones in Chinese. Like you, when you try to produce the tones, it sounds like you're singing. Some people, and I was one of them, like don't know how to sing, but you sound like you're trying to sing. It's a weird feeling. It's like, man, I don't want to know what I'm doing. I don't want to do this. This doesn't sound right. This is or it doesn't feel right. So you just say forget it and just and just do what you can to pick up the language. Um, this goes hand in hand with coming out of your comfort zone. This is something that you you have to do if you're really considering picking up the accent of that particular region. So I think it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of uh, ambition, willingness to come out of your comfort zone. Um, now uh, there was something else I wanted to mention here about that. Uh, yeah, so I mean accent, that's basically that's basically it. That's basically what you need to do if you want to have, you know, go through this accent reduction. Um so, uh moving on. So the the, the next thing was about vocabulary extension. Um this is really a no-brainer. Uh basically what you need to do is just you need to like just read more and just expose yourself to more uh, vocabulary different different topics of course now I should say I, I should also say that just reading is not enough okay reading is good but it's not enough why because when you read something that vocabulary is only going to your passive bank all right and um, to be frank all of us all of us all native English speakers or whatever your language is um, we all have a large vocabulary bank but it's it's probably in the in the passive it's in the passive state it's not in the active state for example if i look at okay i look at a text i can go through a newspaper or some sort of book you know and find many vocabulary words that i understand but i don't use them on a daily basis when i see them i know what they are or even if i hear them i understand them but when i speak i never use them so you know it is in order for me to bring those to what? Bring those to life or, you know, to a living state, if you will, then I have to put, I have to, I have to take all, um, make an effort to utilize those vocabulary words in a certain context, making videos or just bringing up a topic with someone who was familiar with it and then, you know, just use the vocabulary that way. But if you're just reading and listening, it's just going to go to your passive state, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. I'm just saying that. If you want to extend your vocabulary in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, um, in a more active phase, then you have to activate those vocabulary. Otherwise, they're just going to sit there and, you know, you're just going to be able to understand them when you read things. So if you want to, if you want to uh, extend your vocabulary, that's what you have to do. Um, even me, as a native English speaker, I'm still learning new words in English. You know, when I see words that I don't understand, I look them up. And I try to understand, if I don't understand the definition, I try to find examples, example sentences on how they use it. And then I say, oh, okay, so that's how they use that word, you know. So that's basically what you need to do. So, yeah, there you have it. That's the video for accent reduction, um, learning vocabulary. 
I uh, hope I haven't forgotten anything. This is the video. Uh, thanks for viewing. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you want to make a video response, feel free to do so. Uh, otherwise, thanks for viewing and uh, look forward to any responses.